Welcome. You're listening to Ask the Doulas, a podcast where we talk to experts from all over the country about topics related to pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and early parenting. Let's chat. Hello, hello. This is Kristen with Ask the Doulas, and I am so excited to chat with Regina Lum today. Regina is a creative movement instructor, infant massage educator, and a self-proclaimed lay advocate. She owns Little Feet Movement for Developing Minds, a parent-child movement program that was voted as the top two toddler time in the 2023 GR Kids Best of Grandtastic Awards. Welcome, Regina. So happy to have you here. Yay, thank you. I'm so excited to be here as well. It means a lot to me, especially being a small business owner, um, to be given this opportunity and to be recognized by such an influential organization like yours, who's doing great work for the community. So thank you. Thanks. We love partnering with you. Would love to have you tell a bit of your why story of why you started Little Feet and a bit more about what you do in the community of West Michigan. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to share that. So I was born and raised in Malaysia and growing up, I danced ballet and played the piano for like 15 years of my life and did cheerleading, you know, and I really believe that these opportunities positively uh, impacted my life. So I've always dreamt of running a children's music and movement program. So then I moved to Michigan for college, which is where I met my husband. And then we moved to Seattle um, and lived there for a little over 10 years. We had two kids there, and then we moved back to Grand Rapids to be closer to family. We now have three beautiful children, <laughs> and they're like nine, five, and, and two. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Certainly some of your own personal experience and bringing play and movement to your children's lives. So I love it. So although I ended up getting a business degree, my dream of running a children's program never wavered. I, after graduated, college. I worked in different youth development organizations. I coordinated trainings for um, adults who work in youth programs, and I did marketing for various youth programs as well. But where that switch happens is when I became a mom myself. I had my first daughter. I didn't know what to do with her. I wanted to play and connect with her, but I like didn't know what to do. And the experts tell you, oh, you need to put her in tummy time and that's important right. for them. But I never was taught like how to do it effectively and why it's important. And every time I put her in tummy time, she would cry. So I just never did it. Right. Um, yeah. So that's when I found the program in Seattle called Nurturing Pathways that not only showed me what to do with my daughter and how to connect with her, but it also taught me how and why movement and music supports the physical, social, emotional, and cognitive development of a child. It made me become a more confident parent. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. So then I'm, I was really excited to share all that information with as many parents as possible. And I thought, this is it. This is what's going to be my path to my dream of running a, a movement program. So I got certified to be a Nurturing Pathways instructor, and I've been teaching with that program in Seattle since 2017. And then when we moved to Grand Rapids, that was my finally my chance of bringing my dream to life. And I brought that, that program to Grand Rapids and started Little Feet Movement. Yeah. Love it. And then you've expanded. So not only are you a play advocate, but you are an infant massage educator. So tell us a bit about that um, expansion to your business. Yeah. They all kind of work together because what's the you know most important ingredient of a child's development is really the relationship with um, between the parent and child, right? It's that strong relationship that feels development, especially that parent-child relationship. Why that is, is because our brain's first job is to keep us safe. So when our kiddos feel safe and secure, you know, in that relationship with their primary caregiver, their brains can then get out of that fight freeze mode, and then they can be freed up for learning and attending, right? They know that they have that secure base to always come back to so that they'll feel more confident and willing to go out and explore the world. It is really the glue that holds everything together, affecting how kiddos relate to themselves, to others, and how they perceive the world around them, right? For example, like I think I have a pretty positive outlook in life, and I really have my parents to thank for that. Their My relationship with them has really set a good foundation for how I relate to my friends and, and how I was able to develop friendships and how I have positive outlook in life. 
I love it. And I took an, a group infant massage class with my daughter years back and found it to be so beneficial. I mean, touch, communication. I just learned so much about my first baby and how to communicate and, you know, even asking before touching that consent yes. uh -huh. being a big part of it. Yeah. And it's like really giving you the opportunity to tune in to a kiddo's needs and then be able to respond to their needs. Right. And it's that constant uh, attuning, responding that kind of builds that trust and relationship with our kiddos. Yeah. So it. infant massage is really, you know, a good start. And then we kind of go into the play part and the movement part, you know? Yeah, it definitely is a great extension. And with Little Feet, it is parent-child based and you cover not only the babies, but also into the preschool year. So tell us a bit more about what that looks like to work with you. Yeah, so um, we talked about the infant massage part and then for the movement classes, we have our baby, our waddler and toddler classes. With the baby classes, we do a lot of dancing with kiddos in arms. We're really working on that bond and, and that playful connection with our kiddos. Actually, that applies to all of our classes, you know, really working on that playful connection because play is really like, you know, a little window to our kiddos world so that if we're able to enter their world through play, you know, we're able to forge that relationship with them. Yeah. I love that. And so not only, I mean, you are a big play advocate and, you know, focused on creative movement, but how does that help physical development for babies and or toddlers? Yeah. So a little brain fun fact here is that our brain is built from the bottom up, starting with our low brain, um, which consists of our brainstem and cerebellum. And I want to talk a little bit more about the cerebellum here in our low brain, right? So, and then it goes up to our midbrain, which is our social emotional brain, which we'll talk more later. And then our, our high brain, which is our cortex and our thinking brain, which is responsible for cognitive functions and executive functions, language development and things like that. Okay. So how it supports um, our physical development is that our cerebellum is responsible for automated movements. So things like, you know, riding a bike or uh, driving or walking, right? As adults, yes. if you think about it, you don't even think about how we move our bodies anymore. We just do it because thanks to our cerebellum, it's automated now, right? But for our kiddos, especially for our babies, they don't even realize that they're a separate entity from their caregiver until about six to eight months. That's where the separation anxiety begins. So let alone learning how to use their bodies, right? So that's why through movement, we are teaching them about their bodies and how to use their individual body parts and then how to coordinate all these different body parts together to do what we want our bodies to do. So that's like motor planning. And then we we'll also teach our kiddos like how to relate to the space that they that we're in and the things and the people around us and how to navigate through the space. For example, do we make small movements when we're in like a, a crowded room that's you know pretty small? Do we make big movements when we're in a bigger space, right? Moving in different directions and different tempos, just so many different things we can do with our bodies to uh, explore the world. And the more we move our bodies, the more automated movement becomes. And once movement is automated, it'll free up our brain for higher level learning and thinking. So analogy that I like to use um, to kind of illustrate this point is when we first learned to drive, right? We had to think about our every move. We probably can't even talk to the person next to us or listen to music. We just like focused on where our foot is, where our hands are, you know, am I looking, you know, so three true. times? Yeah, right? <laughs> and the more we do, I mean, the more we drive, the more automated it becomes. So. Now we're able to talk to the person next to us. We can navigate directions on the GPS. It's because that movement and that process has already been automated. So that's what we want for our kiddos. Of course. Yeah. I love it. And I'm also a big fan of the self-regulation that you work through, especially with toddlers when they start to get into <laughs> tantrums. And so tell us a bit more about that work. Yeah, for sure. So that's where our midbrain gets lit up, right? Our midbrain is responsible for emotions, our memories and stimulation, and that's where that body-mind connection comes into play. When we know our bodies and we're aware of those emotions and we're able to connect those emotions and, you know, our feelings, you know, in our bodies, the sensations that we're feeling in our bodies, we'll be able to tell, for example, if our skin is trying to get prickly from maybe feeling, you know, overstimulated or like our shoulders are trying to tense up because, you know, we're getting angry, right? And yeah when we're able to be aware of body and how the, our emotions are, we're 
possibly able to find the reason why we're feeling that way, and then learning skills to manage those feelings, whether it's to remove ourselves from the situation or find a healthy outlet for those feelings or simply talking about naming that emotions that can help. Definitely. Them. Yeah, right. And that's what self-regulation is really. It's that ability to notice when we're reaching the threshold and then figuring out steps to keep us in homeostasis before we explode. Yeah. So that's great and very practical if they're again out in public and having some emotions that need to be managed or in a preschool classroom and so on. Yeah. So for example, in class, we do different activities that support um, self-regulation. For example, like we do heavy work and deep pressure activities, which can help regulate our nervous system. We practice stop and go movements so that we can practice our self-control skills. We do freezing and melting movements to learn to control our muscle tension. And then we can use all of these tools, like you're mentioning, as a way to manage our emotions, right? If our kiddos are running wild and they're feeling dysregulated, then we as adults can say, okay, let's get out on the ground and do some heavy work. We'll roll around, we'll push the wall or different heavy activities that can help regulate our nervous system. Or when we're mad, um, muscles are tensed, right? Um, we can then take deep breaths and intentionally relax our muscles, the, our, our shoulders, and then maybe we can even shake our bodies to relax those muscles. How we yes. feel physically can affect us psychologically. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so you're helping them to be very social and also, I mean, with the cognitive development and functions. Take us through a bit about that. Yeah. As far as how your classes can help with sensory processing, language development. Hey, Alyssa here. I'm just popping in to tell you about our course called Becoming. Becoming a mother is your guide to a confident pregnancy and birth, all in a convenient six-week online program. From birth plans to sleep training and everything in between, you'll gain the confidence and skills you need for a smooth transition to motherhood. You'll get live coaching calls with Kristen and myself, a bunch of expert videos, including chiropractic care, pelvic floor physical therapy, mental health experts, breastfeeding, and much more. You'll also get a private Facebook community with other mothers going through this at the same time as you to offer support and encouragement when you need it most. And then, of course, you'll also have direct email access to me and Kristen in addition to the live coaching calls. If you'd like to learn more about the course, you can email us at info at goldcoastdoulas.com or check it out at thebecomingcourse.com. We'd love to see you there. So, you know, what are cognitive functions? I think we briefly mentioned like memory, learning, attention, executive functions, language abilities, right? Um, yes. So in class, we do different things like playing with speed to help develop attention span. Uh, we problem solve using our bodies. For example, okay, let's go through this hoop. So they got to figure out, oh, first I got to duck my head and then take a step through, you know, like do that mo movement through the hoop. That's really problem solving with our bodies. Uh, we do things like uh, obstacle course to develop motor sequencing. All of these things that we do in class will translate into mental capacities because the same neurons we're doing are the same neurons for thinking. So if we can do it with our bodies, we can also do it with our minds. And the more we do these functions, the stronger the neural connections are, allowing us to be able to perform these functions more quickly and automatically in the future. You know, like a path in the grass, right? Yes. It formed through walking that same path over and over again. So that's what we want to do for kiddos. Yeah, so that's kind of like the attention and you know different functions that we can do in class. The other part that supports our cognitive development is you know our memory and learning through dance, whether it's dancing with you know in our caregiver's arms, playing with the different sensory props and variety of music, we're giving our kiddos a rich visual, auditory, tactile, and kinesthetic experience, which is their four learning sensory pathways. When all four of these pathways are activated, the child is more engaged and it provides more memory pathways to recall information. For example, you know, trying to recall somebody's name because I'm so bad at remembering people's names. When people just tell me their names, it just flies right. out of my brain. I don't know. Same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you kind of hear it, but, you know, and then you write it down, we activate the kinesthetic and tactile sense and then we see it visually. We are, you know, we have more chances of remembering that person's name, right? Exactly. Yeah, because we're just giving them more pathways to recall that information. That's what learning really is, you know, the ability to recall information. 
So a Chinese proverb that I've heard of is like, it goes, it, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So that's why some people are, they learn better through doing. Yes. Everyone's got, you know, I learn best by writing things down. And yeah, like you said, some people really need to experience it to remember. So yeah, it is great that you can focus on, you know, all of the different learning styles and communication styles. So yeah, and movement is so central, as you said. So for our listeners who live outside of West Michigan, what is the best way to find a similar program in their own community? Oh, yeah. Well, the program that I'm certified through is called Nurturing Pathways, and it's based out of Seattle. And the founder of that program also trained different creative movement instructors as well. Okay. And they're all over the country. Um, I know that there's a program out in Colorado and I believe in Kentucky and different states. Good question, because I'm not really sure where we can find a whole list of all these programs. I know there's one in Idaho too, I think. Because what happened was our founder, she retired last year and she used to have a whole list of all the providers on her website. Oh, okay. But once she retired, she kind of removed that information, you know, the, the whole the website. So now we are kind of find, figuring ways to kind of, uh, how can we house all her information that we had, she had? So yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah. And if it's not that specific program, I'm sure even like doing a search or Googling like creative movement or different terms could be helpful. And you yes. are located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, yes. serve the West Michigan area. So what would be some of the different channels that our listeners can find you at besides um, littlefeetmovement.com? You're also on social media, correct? Yes, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. And yeah, right now I don't post as often as I I should, but yeah, that's where people can find more Okay. Yeah. And then before we wrap things up, Regina, how can parents support their child's sensory and and motor development at home? Again, some, if our listeners are in a very rural area that doesn't have these options, I would love to hear some tips from you. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned earlier, like sensory processing, right? So 80% of brains dedicated to sensory processing. And that's what really a parents can do. A parent can do for kiddos at home is activating those different sensory pathways, like the visual, auditory, tactile, kinesthetic, which is through movement. So they can totally do that at home, right? With any sensory toys, ribbons and scarves and instruments different, you know, dance and sing with them at home. But I think going back to the main ingredient of what supports development is that strong relationship. So I would say, get on the floor and play with the kiddos, follow their gaze and their interest and really engage in the world of play. So that's kind of what I would uh, recommend that parents can do at home. Yeah. And you mentioned your own personal struggles with tummy time. Any advice on that? Because as you stress, floor time is important. Yes, exactly. For those that know me, know that I'm a huge advocate floor time, less propping our kiddos up to sit and stand or putting them in seat um, because there are so many developmental milestones that our, our kiddos need to go through as intended and letting them, getting them there themselves is so important. So when we think of tummy time, we all always think, oh, putting them on the floor, right? On their tummies. But there's actually a variety of ways, variety of ways that we can do tummy time, like whether kind of on a parent's chest or well, even if you're sitting, they're still on your chest and they're still holding their head and their backs up, right? We can put them on yoga balls and roll them around. That's what we do for rhyme time uh, in our baby class as well. So just different ways we can offer tummy time and doing floor time with our kiddos. It could also be, um, instead of just being on their tummy, we could do sideline positions with our kiddos as well. All of this is because getting them on the floor really helps them to learn about their bodies, you know, through that feedback from the ground. When they kick the floor and when they push on their arms, they can feel, oh, that's my arm or that's my legs, right? And then it helps develop a sense of agency because, you know, when they see a toy, they And then they figured out how to move their body to get to that toy. And when they get the toy, can you imagine how they feel? Woohoo, I did it myself, right? Right. Yeah. And then we help them develop the strength to get to the next milestone. For example, with sitting, right? When we prop our kiddos up when they're not ready for it because they haven't developed the back and core strength, they end up slumping forward or even worse, they fall backwards, right? So when they, and then when they fall, they won't be able to catch themselves because they didn't get to that sitting position on their own. So that's why we wanted to let them just develop that strength 
that's required to get to that next milestone. Yeah, so, and then, you know, lastly, when we go through those different milestones, we develop different motor patterns that help stimulate the neural pathways in our brains. Um, and the more we stimulate those neural pathways, the more organized they will be, then information can flow more quickly and automatically to all different parts of our brains. And that's what an integrated brain means. So one final question, Regina, how do you manage, um, say, parents who have multi-age children at home, so they're not yet in school with your classes? Are they able to bring along, say, a three-year-old with a newborn, or how does that work with multi-age? That's a really good question. Um, right now, I do, uh, you know, allow for, you know, of course, if a parent is able to have the some, another caregiver watch the other kid so that then you can have like one-on-one -on -one time with your that one kiddo coming to class that's wonderful that's and, ideal yeah right ideal of course right that's what we want with our kiddos like the one-on-one -on -one time but i know like you said myself included we you know with multiple children so i do encourage parents to also bring the kiddos for example if you have a three-year-old and a baby right you can bring the baby in their car seats or their um or, or put them in the carrier and you can move and dance together so you sign up for the toddler class and then you bring the baby and you can, everybody can dance and benefit from the music and the movement. Because if you're strapped on the carrier, the baby's also feeling all this kinesthetic uh, sensory sense. That some of the things that the baby can get involved in is with the instrument time and the rhymes. So we're also really developing for the baby, even though they're not like actively so-called signed up for class. That's and, ideal because, you know, yeah. often childcare is not as expensive if yeah. you're paying for a program then it's like, okay, what do you do budget wise? So it's wonderful that your program and likely many others offer that option. And if the kiddo is like older, you know, like two siblings, I might offer a sibling discount where you sign both of them up for class and then they get a 50% sibling discount. I, it's a pretty steep <laughs> discount that I'm offering because I want, I want people to come and benefit from the program, you know? Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing all of your wisdom. It was a blast, Regina, and I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Yes, likewise. Thank you so much, Kristen. Take care. Thanks for listening to Ask the Doulas. For more information about Gold Coast Doulas, visit us on our website, goldcoastdoulas.com. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give us a five-star review. Thank you. Remember, these moments are golden.